So I'm gonna go over mixing your Stone Kit 13. Cool part about these kits is if you wanna incorporate some other colors, some accent colors, we can simply take spray paint, um, spray it into a cup, get liquid spray paint that way, and we can dump them in randomly uh, when we start batching out our dirty pour batches. So if you guys wanted to add a color, it's as simple as that. Go pick up the spray paint color that you want, and you can always add a couple extra colors. You don't have to mix it, we're just dumping that in when we do our batches um, after everything's mixed. So it's a cool little way to add some accent colors if you want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the three gallon kit of epoxy all together. Once I pour out three quarts for the white, I'm gonna separate the rest of the resin into four containers. I'm gonna add the four colors, mix those in. Once that's done, we're gonna start making our dirty pour batches. All right, so now we got all of our colors mixed up. Um, again, we wanna make sure we move quick. If you can have someone else helping you mix these colors, that's gonna save you time, right? And give you more working time with the product. All right, so now we wanna immediately get these to the counter and start dumping them out. The biggest thing when pouring out is all that resin has to cover all the counters and they're not all in the same space. So you'll constantly see me pour a bead, a couple beads, I'm gonna jump over here, pour a couple, pour a couple, pour a couple, grab a new container. Maybe I'll start here this time and I'm constantly jumping around the counters. That's giving the beads that I previously poured out time to level out and move. Once I get a decent amount poured out, all the gaps that I have that aren't filled, I'm gonna pour right in the middle of those gaps with the next beads. All right, so we got all the product dumped out. If you have some random spots, I mean, we can still drain some stuff out of these containers, right? But again, you can see how thick it is around this spot. All we have to do is we can either drain some out or just pat it around, get rid of that surface tension, and then it'll level out. Make sure all the corners have resin to them, all the tape has resin to them, because we're gonna disperse the surface now. If you don't like those cells or craters, you can skip this step and just mist it with denatured alcohol. That's gonna help eliminate any of the air that might be trapped into the resin and so small to medium drops and we're just letting that hit that surface. And you can also hit this randomly too. You don't have to hit it everywhere on the counter. We're gonna let this evaporate for about five minutes and then we're gonna mist it with denatured alcohol. As you can see, looking at this, we have some, some air trapped in the resin. What happens is since we're doing so many multiple pours, right, all over the place, we're, we're encapsulating air every time we pour over resin and pour over resin. And so all we have to do to get rid of those, mist the surface with denatured alcohol. But I like to let it, the isopropyl evaporate because if you flood the surface too much, all these veins will start to get muddy and they won't look as crisp. And so it's still super fluid. And so we wanna wait. And it's good to kind of jump around and hit a couple spots because some spots might be thicker, but it's really, really runny right now. We're looking for it to kind of 
kind of slowly, the resin kind of slowly move down that tape, right? Thicken up, that's when we want to pull the tape. So when it gets to that point, um, we'll come back out, we'll show you how to pull the tape. All right, so it's ready to pull tape. It's been about a half an hour now. You can see how much slower it's moving now. So that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna pull the tape and then that's gonna let the resin slowly run down the edge and I'll just wad the tape up as I pull it. This is when the counters really come to life once we get these edges coated. And so what happens is it starts to flow, drags that design down the face. Once we get a decent amount on there, we just need to rub in the spots where it's not hitting. So the whole face is covered in epoxy and that's what allows it to flow over evenly and creates those natural faces. So you see where we hit, it's already almost halfway down, pulling that design down again, right here, right? So that's, that's kind of how we do our faces. And that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, good to hang around if you can. Just kind of check your edges. Sometimes you'll get maybe something that just runs off and doesn't look natural. We can touch that up with a paintbrush. So yeah, that's it. Make sure you scrape your drips, but this is it. And then we let this set up come back the next day in top coat.